Welcome to the Never Chain Talk Show with Nick Vujicic, a Life Without Limbs production. I'm so excited because our show today marks the official launch of our 2022 campaign for Life Without Limbs, Champions for the Broken Hearted. It's going to be a 12-month series where we'll be discussing a different worldwide issue each month with individuals who are experts on these topics. Our January launch focuses on the theme of human trafficking. In just a few weeks, we'll be talking to Christine and Nick Kane from A21, and today we'll be speaking with my friends Jakub Boyens and Sheriff Bill Weyburn. Both are outspoken advocates against trafficking, and they will be sharing more about what trafficking looks like in the present day in our country, the United States. In addition to serving as a board member for my nonprofit organization, Life Without Limbs, Jakub Boyens is an abolitionist and a powerful advocate against trafficking. He directed and produced the film Eight Days to raise awareness about sex trafficking and founded the nonprofit Share Together. There's a new documentary that I want him to mention later on, and so far he's worked. In, uh, just tirelessly with law enforcement agencies in 56 countries around the world and is a frequent speaker on major news networks. Our dear friend Sheriff Weyburn serves at the Tarrant County uh, here in Texas and was just re-elected last year. I, I can tell you right now, I am personally moved when you get to know his story and his heart uh, as a local law enforcement agent and minister of God. Um, he's an Air Force veteran who became the youngest police chief in Texas in 1984 and is a graduate of the FBI National Academy and the Texas A&M Police Academy. As sheriff, he's worked tirelessly, tirelessly to create a human trafficking unit that has gained national prominence by being the tip of the spear. He's also the father of 10 beautiful children, eight of which are adopted. Wow, Sheriff Weyburn, thank you so much for coming here. We are so honored to have you on our, on our show as a guest to help us really understand on the front line. It's almost as if you are uniquely positioned in your experience and your heart that you're almost, I'm going to say, in front of the front line. And I love you very much. And thank you for inspiring me and our team to have you here to help everyone else know the, first of all, problems that we have in human trafficking throughout the show and, and how we all can help uh, really eradicate this terrible evil. Yes. Uh, but first of all, Sheriff Weyburn, thank you for coming. And my first question here is, tell me a little bit and our viewers, uh, how you first came, come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and what that means for you. And tell us a little bit about the work as a sheriff here for many years in the DFW area. Well, thank you, Nick, for having me. Uh, it's incredible to be with you. Thank you for the being at the tip of the spear and the warrior for this. And you got other great warriors with us today that, that lead on these. So I'm humbled to be in your presence and on this program. You know, I was blessed to be raised in a Christian household where my parents believed in that Deuteronomy 6. We heard about Jesus from the time we got up until the time we went to bed. But as life went on and I learned more about this person called Jesus is I understood I couldn't do things by myself I that there was a bigger cause that was at at large here and so at probably about the age of 14 is uh, as I came to Christ and asked him to be my savior and and he he took me in his arms and uh, and I have been able to march through life because of the gospel and I, and I believe it's it, it's intertwined in my life every day not that I haven't fouled up not that I haven't messed up but I depend on his grace and mercy every day. Amen. 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 And tell us about um, almost like your daily life. Uh, uh, you're one of the busiest people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and not just the quantitative rhythm of go, 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 and you can never switch off. You're the sheriff. That is a huge responsibility. Uh, but even the, 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 
the magnitude of where God is using you here in the DFW. Just a couple highlights here for those who don't even live in Texas. Help us to understand the pulse as the local sheriff here in the DFW Metroplex. Thank you. Uh, Tarrant County, Fort Worth is our cap, uh, is our seat, and it's the third largest county in Texas, 15th largest county in the nation, and we are busy, but I believe that we, that as my Bible teaches, I'm a citizen of heaven. So we're here on mission. We're either mission, we're on mission or we're tourists. So I believe that we're on mission. And with that being it, I tell my kids all the time, we can take, we have two choices. We can be sitting on the couch watching the news or we're out making the news. And I don't mean literally, but I mean out there and moving and doing what we need to be doing. But we are extremely busy in our organization. We have 1,700 great people that are working for us and trying to stand between good and evil every day. And uh, so we do have a lot to do in a lot of areas to address. Address. One of those, of course, is human trafficking, which is huge on our radar. And uh, right when I became in an office, we created that unit. We knew that there's an issue there. We were the largest unit in North Texas at the time, and they have led the way in, in a lot of areas just recently uh, with predators. Uh, we made 115 arrests in one operation over a few weeks where we arrested 115, and it was the largest operation in America's history and still holds to this day. My good friend Grady Judd down in South Florida came up second with 102 arrests, but wow. but uh, not that there's a competition, but I'm proud of my team. Sheriff Weyburn, let me just tell our viewers, uh, I want you to know that the University of Texas at Austin, listen very carefully, estimates that there are more than 300,000 victims of human trafficking in Texas, including 79,000 minors and youth victims and 234,000 adult victims of labor tra trafficking. That to me is a state of emergency. We've known about it, especially here in America. We've heard about it though for many years as if it was a worldwide issue and more of a global issue here in our own backyard um, uh, for, for me, my heart, I, I, I remember when I first um, learned about human trafficking, Sheriff mm -hmm. Weyburn, I remember when I was asked to speak in front of 650 sex slaves wow. in a foreign country um, to talk about the love of Jesus. And I will never forget the <sighs> magnitude of emotions and heaviness that comes with it, especially when you first en engage and immerse yourself and allow yourself to when we as Western Christian mindset prayers say, God, break your heart for what breaks yours. Can I ask you, Sheriff Weyburn, how did you first have the wake up call or was it something that you knew that was always an issue or how did it really become real to you where you were like wow this is one of the if not the most important part of my mission here in, as sheriff in Tarrant County well I will tell you is that uh, in my adoption of children I was in Russia and I saw what was happening there with human trafficking and how these children didn't have a chance. And I thought, well, is this really going on in America? That was almost, you know, 20 years ago now. And then when I got back and I started looking at our foster care program, not only in Texas, but across the country. And those children that you mentioned, a lot of those come out of the foster care program because the state makes a horrible parent. And that... This is where I, I would wish the churches would wake up and get involved in that and adopt those children and rescue them out of that. And we need to change some legislation uh, in Texas like we do other states because all of a sudden it became very, very real to me that our kids right here, our children, Texas children, are being used in this manner and the average age is 14 getting into sex trafficking in Texas. And uh, when I saw all that, it was just kind of overwhelming. So we narrowed it to our scope here in Tarrant County and we now have, uh, we have founded a, um, a multi-county task force 
and we're going to continue going after this and trying to rescue those victims, hopefully get them on the right track with some of our 501c partners, and, and go after predators uh, with, uh, as I like to say in Texas, with a gust of a hound dog, because it's a real issue, just like you said. It is here, it's prevalent, and uh, we need to uh, eradicate it from from our lives, not only worldwide, but right here is where we start. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Jakub mm -hmm. um, I just want the viewers to know that this is not just two guests that we felt the Holy Spirit would would move us to, to host here and showcase uh, as a conduit of the Holy Spirit to our viewers today. But you both know each other. On the front line, you've worked together as well. Uh, both uh, regionally based here in the DFW Metroplex. Jakub Boyens, welcome uh, to the Never Chain Talk Show. Thank you for coming. Um, I wanted to ask you as well, uh, first of all, how did you come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ? What is he to you? And tell us how you were introduction, how you were introduced to uh, the entire evil of human mm -hmm. trafficking and your fight for that. Yeah, Nick, thanks. First, <clears throat> honor to you, to God, and this man is a champion, absolute champion, so appreciative of him. We cannot, as a nonprofit, as an NGO, a non-government organization, it's impossible to fight an evil such as sex trafficking without law enforcement. It's not possible. And so I want people to just reframe their thinking of the position of law enforcement in our country because it touches these issues which are heart issues of America. You're talking about children. This is bipartisan, can't be politicized. And the second you, you, you touch police in any negative way, the children are the first ones suffering because task force, forces like Sheriff Wayburn's task force rarely exist in the country and so and normally it's two-man teams and three-man teams so so just huge honor and respect to be with him always such a pleasure nick jesus is my lord and savior which literally he's my lord and he's my savior he had to save me from myself <laughs> exactly okay and i was raised in the church by a single mom an amazing woman who walks on water. I knew Jesus from when I came out of the womb because he was spoken. We sat on my mom's bed every night and read Bible together. But still, I had to meet him for myself. And I was saved at 7 and 14 and baptized probably four times by the time I was 21. But I needed an encounter. And I want to encourage your viewers that, that he is a Savior. He's Lord, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But he's a Savior and he's personal. So for me, it's personal. Because I can mark times in my life where he has kept me alive where he's kept my family alive. We'll talk about that a little bit about my sister. And, and he, has, he has marked me personally. It's a personal. I think this is, this is why he's the king of kings. Because it's personal. No other God's personal. Because there's only one true God. So for me, it's personal. And just like Sheriff Weyburn, we've got so many people in our lives who have adopted from Russia, who have spent time in Russia, Dan Funk on our, on our team. And when you see evil, uh, it is a rude awakening. So for us, that rude awakening happened around 1994 when Ilanka, my sister, was trafficked. And that's her story to tell, but as a brother, from the, from the lens of a brother, it's a uh, sobering moment when, one, you, you learn through your sister's first account of what was done to her. And at the time, I was still wrestling with who's really in charge of my life. Is it me or Jesus? You know? So I was really serving two masters, myself and, and God, having already been saved. Uh, and I came to my end that I'm not her dad, I'm not in control, and, and we need him, right? And so learning firsthand from a survivor, and these are survivors, it was just, it was, it, it's life-changing, right? And, it, and then God compelled himself in the middle of the night, compelled and called and said, I'm calling you to this fight. Not just for your sister, but this is now for every child. Now, that was South Africa, so imagine when I come to the U.S., for us as foreigners, people need to understand, as an immigrant, we, we love this place. It is so unique. This nation is so unique. The Judeo-Christian foundation is so unique of any other country in the world, and it needs to be defended. Uh, but never did I expect to see human trafficking or sex trafficking in this country. Surely not. And it was very, sh very short you know, time frame. Chattanooga, Tennessee is the first place where I saw with my eyes what my sister told me 
had happened to her. And it was a, another rude awakening of, wait a minute, in America, and then of course, as you know, the numbers and, and as the sheriff knows. So it's a fight that we have to fight, but it's really a fight, Nick, um, that's in every household. Mm. It starts with the nuclear family, it starts with the father. If we're really gonna win this battle, we can arrest a hundred and, and that, it's incredible, but that's triage to a degree. We've mm -hmm. got to get ahead of this thing and really like programs like this and speak into the family and speak into the father and say, it's time to father, not be a dad. It takes 30 seconds to become a dad. It's real quick. Father is work. It's work. You got to earn your daughter's heart, earn your son's heart. Boys are trafficked too. Very underserved, that conversation in boys. So this is a moment of fathers, according to the heart of the father, Stepping in, get uncomfortable and earn your children's hearts so that the predator online does not. And because these predators, it's not kidnapping, Nick. You know, kidnapping is small percentage, but it's so familial. Uh, and they, they really, in, in a way, they earn the girl's hearts online. They speak the flower language. They speak what they crave or the attention or whatever. And it's so many different forms of trafficking. So um, every single human being in America can fight this fight even only to prevent it in their own home, mm. because it's in every neighborhood. You know, when the viewers listen to that and they think, oh, in my home, no, never. My child, no, never. Uh, as the statistics continue to come in of even just being sexually abused or assaulted, uh, is now I think the girls are one out of four or one out of three. Uh, and the boys now one out of five. It used to be one out of eight, now one out of five right. of what the reports are coming from the police departments nationwide. Um, Sheriff Weyburn, on that family unit and the strength of this, uh, I want to allow you to, to add to what Yaku uh, opened about the, the family unit. He spoke it perfectly. Yaku is absolutely spot on in my experience, and I believe it. And it's just like, and as he said, it's exactly what the Bible said, is that these people need dads in the home that become great fathers who, who, uh, who raise their children. What I would say to that family unit also, mom and dad, I don't care how perfect you think your family is, how squared away it is, I beg of them to invade their children's space, to look at the social media that they're on, to see the history of their phone calls, to look at their text, because these predators are slick folks and can just reel them in, mm -hmm. you know, in one runaway where they think they're meeting Prince Charming and all of a sudden this is going to go south very quickly and they could be three states over by the time their parents realize that they're gone. And, uh, uh, but in often in these cases, and just like the foster kids and everything else, is that nuclear family where kids don't have a home forever that they don't have a stable home, that they don't have a father in the home, that's the issue. Right now, in, uh, in our Tarrant County Jail, I have 4,000 residents this morning, 80% of them will be fatherless. And, and when you have that, and 80% will also not have a high school education. So we see what the issues are. And I agree with Jocko that we've got to get ahead of it. And this is the call of the church. We have got to mission to it. And just like I talk about Fort Worth, Texas and Tarrant County, this is our Jerusalem. Yes. Let's, let's mission here. Let's, let's go to work with here. You know, uh, we got, we got 300 kids ready for adoption in Tarrant County and we got 800 churches. That's right. Where is the church? That's Where right. is the church? Where is the church? Uh, Sheriff, thank you for posing the question because that is our heart here on, on today's show. When we talk about the church, um, can you also add flavor and context to the realization for those of us who are the remnant, who are not sleeping in a coma state, um, about the wool that the enemy has put in front of our eyes in the texture that we can't talk about political issues as a church, especially when it comes to the wall, that the wall is a Trump thing, that the wall is not something that we should as a church really talk about. I know people in our spheres that represent uh, this statement that we, the church, if not our own state sovereign authorities calling it a state of an emergency, for us as a church to understand 
please validate this if this is correct or not, and then in your own words add, God has helped me to say your sentence to say to the church, you can't talk about the fact that we are a church that is pro-life without talking about human trafficking. And Yaku, you know that we can't talk about human trafficking as a church until we address the pornography in the That's church. Right, and Absolutely. you agree, Chef Weber, Absolutely. Sheriff yes, Weber. 100%. Um, and you can't talk about pro-life without talking about human trafficking without talking about the broken foster care system where there is a half a million children waiting for a home or a forever home, foster or adopted. And we have 100,000 churches in America representing $480 billion worth of debt for buildings. You can't talk about pro-life without talking about human trafficking, without talking about the foster care and adoption crisis and catastrophe. At the same time, you can't forget talking about the national border security crisis right here in Texas, allowing many people coming, especially minor, unaccompanied minors, who often then become uh, human traffic. I want you to validate that as the mm -hmm. sheriff, and from what you know, that the border crisis that really has started to escalate this year in 2021 the effects of human trafficking and the importance that we all must focus in on the national security crisis thank you and yes let's talk about the border for just a moment mm -hmm. not only the human trafficking go over but there there the the copious amounts of drugs that are coming on we're going to set a record by far five and six and seven times the, the uh, amount of drugs that are in our streets, and they're part of that human trafficking. This is combined stuff, and they're coming over. Let's, the wall, where they pit make that the Trump wall or the political wall, let's just say this. The Border Patrol has been asking for that wall for like 15 years. It wasn't Trump's idea. It was the troops on the ground idea right. to put up that wall, and it's still needed. There's sections of the border that still need it. And far as, if I may jump back to the church and their responsibilities here, is I would challenge our pastors, our evangelical pastors, go back and read the Federalist Papers. See what Hamilton said about church and state. See what Washington said. See what was done there. Because they said if we, we, the only way we can have a stable republic is with Jesus. And that, and that is verified in our Federalist Papers. That's verified in our Constitution. It's verified in our Declaration of Independence. Independence. It's very clear. And let's talk about the American Revolution where God had called this country to step up and become the free nation that it is. Who was rallying the troops in the field? Who was leading that revolution? It was the pastors of the churches yep. who did that. And they were the leaders out there and went and gave their life for us. So if we just remember our beginnings and look at what they really intended to do, maybe it would reshape what we should be talking about from the pulpit and not be fearful to walk, step back because you're spot on. I'm as pro-life as anybody come. I think life begins at conception, but we got to remember that baby's going to be born. Amen. And we have a responsibility there and thereafter. Amen. So you were right on in that we've got to address all this stuff and we need to do it not only in our churches, but have, cause a movement in our legislators to yeah. say, this is what we've got to have. Move this way yeah. and let's get it done. Should this not be taught in schools? Oh, yes, it should. Instead of some of the stuff that we're seeing today, we need to be talking about what, where our country came from and how it was founded with religious men believing that they were Christ-centered and understood that that's what it would take to stabilize a free country. And uh, if, if they would teach that just a little bit, as they did in, in 1795, we would sure get ahead of the curve a little bit and maybe get other people to get on board to go, oh my goodness, yeah. where are we going? Yeah. Right, but let us first start with the church. Yeah. Those of us who shouldn't be surprised nor distracted that evil people do evil, but us, the bride of Christ, who know now, who know now, when you know what is really going on, we are therein responsible for a kingdom responsibility level 
for our own congregation, for our own families, and for our own nation. Yaku, you've been to the border with Border Patrol, with many local forces of mm -hmm. governmental authorities. You've seen what's going on. You've seen the worst of it yourself. Tell us some texture on what is really happening on the border as you go down there and the crisis they're in. Yeah, this is last week, Nick, as fresh as last week. I'll say this, absolutely, the idea of the wall came from the agents, but you have to understand that there's 1,941 miles of border, the 1,241 miles, give or take, of Texas border with Mexico. Think of that for one second, 1,200 plus miles to patrol. A lot of this border is private farms. It's ranch property, it's private property. So now you get into private property law, you get into trespassing law, you get into the fact that trespassing is not a felony. And the point of arrest, we make it so hard under the current administration for law enforcement to do their job. We're literally asking law enforcement to work blindfolded with their hands tied behind their back and a muzzle on their mouths with a script coming from an administration. And we're seeing a catastrophic demoralization of law enforcement on the border. And these men and women are fathers. Remember, this man, I'm going to point at him not to be rude, but there's a human being in this uniform. It's not just a uniform. There's a father and a husband in here, a man with feelings and emotions. He's a big, burly guy, but he still has a heart, right? And so these Border Patrol agents wake up every morning and fish children out of the river. Yeah, absolutely. I'm talking about fishing, children floating upside down out of the river. Last week, we're on a ranch property, five girls abandoned, a three-year-old naked throughout the night with the coyotes trying to eat them, not the people, the actual animals. You have to understand that children have become a commodity in the world, and it's definitely a commodity on the Mexican side of the border. We have a guy now from the cartel on camera that talk about when a child and his or her mother cannot repay the debt, because there's a debt assigned to them. Even if they come into the U.S. and they work, they're working off debt. They're paying the cartel back. How? Through sex. And, and scripture tells us clearly, a, a, a sexual crime on a human being is a crime on your own body. It's on the temple. The, the disaster that ensues in a child's emotional and mental psyche, the decades it takes to rehabilitate a child. Now, if that child is a living ghost, an illegal alien in this country, where we're asking law enforcement, find the children. There's no fingerprint. There's no birth certificate. No one's looking for them. It is a field day for traffickers in our nation, right? But the children are even being used to bring fentanyl across the border. If you talk to Sheriff Lamb, who's a friend, a mutual friend, an amazing human being in, in Arizona, the fentanyl pills flowing across the border. It's, it's unprecedented, Nick, and you're talking about the most dangerous drug on earth. And so it's a huge crisis on the border. A wall will help, but the policy is so important. The wall, you can scale a wall you can go to Governor Abbott's containers and at some point it ends because there's private property. They're going across private property. They're cutting fences. This is logistical things that I want people to think about. If you cut the fence of a farmer, you compromise the whole fence. His cow walks out on the road. A human being hits the cow. The farmer's liable. That's the law. And so it's, it's, it's so nuanced. It's so connected. It, you can't just say, hey, our policy is all are welcome. And, and when you have a, when you have Leadership that says we guarantee every child a safe home in this country. Pause for a second. Rewind 10 minutes ago when the sheriff told you we've got a problem taking care of our own foster children. We can't make that promise that we can take people from a hundred different nations coming across our border. So I ask people to put yourself in the shoes of a law enforcement, whether it's state troopers, border patrol, National Guard, Texas Guard. Or, or the sheriffs, Sheriff Coe down, down in, you know, in, in Kenny County. You know? Put yourself in their shoes in the morning when they put the uniform on and they go, here we go again. It doesn't stop. It's every day. Every day. And they sign up to defend this country against terrorism and, and threats, foreign and domestic. So it's a huge fight. So it has to be a policy from the top that says there's a legal procedure through which you can enter the United States. There's a legal procedure through which you can get asylum. You can, but you apply on the other side of the border. I'm an immigrant, Nick. It took me nine years to get a green card. You know firsthand 
being married to an immigrant, what, and you're an immigrant, what that battle is like when yep. you do it legally. Yep. But this country is worth it. It has to be defended. It has to be legal. There has to be structure. The irony is we want walls around our homes, locks on our doors, but we want a, we want a nation to be open. It doesn't work that way. Mm -mm. Nefarious characters will exploit that on every level. That's right. Amen. Well said. Uh, look, I've been to the border and I shockingly learned that Border Patrol police officers are committing suicide uh, for reasons that they feel neglected, abandoned, and even betrayed by their own policy makers here in our own country who get up every day with that burden and responsibility and feel like this is an unending war where there is no reinforcement to actually validate what they're doing the way they're doing it with productivity and progress. We're losing the battle and it is becoming overwhelming uh, for people there on the border. Second of all, I went to the border and I saw itineraries of flights from, they reported to me, 178 nations now represented coming across the border. Tens of thousands of miners saying goodbye to their mother on the border who agreed to be a sex traffic victim to get their child from different countries, even from uh, difficult situations in countries in Central America, M millions being displaced. Um, but you're absolutely right in understanding the righteousness here and the, the responsibility we has, have first as a country for our own sake, our God-given blessings. Not that we are a nation that don't help, help people, but this is a crisis that, that really questions the integrity of where do we really stand as a country on this border issue alone. But I do want to now shift gears for a second um, in, in understanding that it's more than America, it's more than the, 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 the policy, it's more than the national border. So there's a lot to unpackage here. And I wish we had hours to unpackage all of this in depth to help people understand all this better. Um, but for me, um, for the sake of this interview, Sheriff Weyburn, you have publicly uh, correlated a definition that human trafficking and the crisis herein that we are facing is, as you termed it, modern day slavery. Help us understand what that really, really means. Let me just take you through a particular case where we rescued somebody out of human trafficking. This young lady was 16 years old and she was from a broken home and she wanted to eat so she was working at a McDonald's and uh, and what a person came in and began to talk to her a female by the way was recruiting her she didn't know it and and kept telling her hey my my brother is has a call center and you can make three times what you make here well that's what it was about and he's signing people up at the local hotel she shows up at the local hotel and long story short she was beaten she was drugged and told in her own words, you are owned and you're owned by me. And then she was sexually assaulted 10 to 12 times a day for the next few weeks. And she was drugged during that time. And she was sold to another trafficker at that time who also beat her. And, uh, and in fact, the, the predators that were coming in, and they were paying, there was a couple that would pay extra money that after the sex act, if they could beat her, and of course the trafficker was saying, stay off the body, I mean stay off the face and just the body. So she, they were able to do that. And fortunately for her, like any other entrepreneur, he wanted to cut back on cost. And so what he did, this trafficker did, is he started, he quit giving her as much drugs as he had been giving her because he wanted to save money. And she was sober minded enough and uh, to, to get out of that and escape. Uh, and into our arms, fortunately. And she's, as far as I know, she's doing okay today and she's in, in therapy. But she was owned. Mm -hmm. she, they, she was sold. She was beaten. She was all, you know, sexually assaulted 10 to 12 times a day. And, uh, and who was looking for her? 
nobody. Nobody was looking for her. And uh, so that's what the picture is to me. She was a human slave. Right. And we have many other stories just like that that are absolutely overwhelming. Whether it's a child and child labor, we've had those issues, and other children in, 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 in sex life. Mm -hmm. To me, Sheriff Weyburn, I'm going to say it in a sentence that I've never said it before. I've said it before on the church platforms and pulpits that if God doesn't punish America for our sins, he needs to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> and, and the first sin are the 77 million unborn babies' lives that were murdered as child sacrifice. And number two, are millions of children in our country that are being sexually abused up to 12 times a day as our modern slavery and no one's looking for her. That is a sin and blood on our hands until we fix up this mess. Many other evils that our country really needs to look at starting with the church. If we not the people of God, then who? Now, as ministers of God, through the enforcement authorities given to you and your team, Sheriff Weyburn, tell us how your team combats this on the ground and what happens after you've rescued those victims? Well, some of the methodology we don't make public. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do use uh, different tools, including the internet, including other things, and of course, physical, uh, physical places and, and all that, that kind of thing. But when we were able to rescue these, rescue, uh, rescue these people, we're able to, we're partnered with a couple of 501Cs. One of them is called Unbound, mm -hmm. and the other one is Valiant Heart. And Valiant Heart is, is a lot of those people are made up of former sex slaves. So they're, they're, they're able to go into this and they're able to exactly understand where this person been and what they've done and what they've gone through and, and uh, uh, where they're at. And so they're able to help them. And that's been pretty successful. We all, Unbound has uh, been successful also. And one of the things that they're doing right now, and we, as a community we did in, in, in Greater Fort Worth, is we have a safe place that if you're not ready to go to law enforcement and you're a teenager that's caught up in sex trafficking, we're advertising in that location that you can come there, you can get rest, you can get ministry, you can, get, uh, you can eat, and you will be safe. Uh, right there. So we're having kids come out of sex trafficking in, in some of that. And again, these kids that wander into there, there's nobody looking for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, with saying that, if I could jump back to the border for just a second. Go for it. You know, some of the times that I hear people say, what would Jesus do? Shouldn't you have open borders? He wouldn't have a border up. And I always want to make sure everybody understands our Bible has an immigration plan. You know, we don't call it the pearly gates for nothing. There's some things that you have to do to get where Jesus is. And it is a immigration policy in biblical form. So we're doing the same thing. In, in wow. Yep. Wow. I've never seen it that way. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, on that context, I just wish every youth of America was watching and listening. Yeah. I wish every parent would be watching and listening um, here in America and actually doing something. Um, when we talk about the family role and the church, we've already covered it. But one last message to the family and the church in this, um, in the context and share what you feel from God's heart mm -hmm. and his view on this topic. Speak to the Christians on human trafficking, to the both of you. And I'm going to start with Yaku. Um, from a viewer's point of view right now, yeah. a parent or a young person who knows of God, yes. who doesn't understand the, the urgency and importance of this essential thing that our church may not be addressing in the coming years properly. To the fact of saying, well, my church doesn't really do this, or I don't know what, where to start. Talk to the people that are watching right now. Okay. First, and, and thank you, Nick, for, and this is really what's on my heart for today. This is the church. Amen. This is the church. This body is the temple of God. So we can no longer relegate the responsibility 
or delegate the responsibility to a pastor only, I'm going to say this to you. If we're going to make any dent in this fight, people say, Yaku, I want to fight sex trafficking, and I'm very well documented saying this. My first question is, and I'll say this to you, are you part of the problem? And unless you're willing, every sing unless Yaku Boyens tomorrow morning, and I do it every single morning, is willing to ask myself, am I part of the problem? Unless we're willing to do self-analysis and take ownership of my family, my community, how do I impact them? People go, how dare you ask me that? And I say, okay, do you watch porn? And then you hear the breaks. But that's got <laughs> nothing to do with trafficking. It's got everything to do with trafficking. Sex is sex. You're a train stop number one, you're watching porn. Train stop number 57, you're paying for, for sex. Train stop number 99, you're paying for sex with a minor. It's one set of train tracks. They don't run parallel. So if you're engaging in porn, you are feeding demand to sexually exploit and manipulate people. You are contributing to the problem. It's a sobering thought. But unless we're willing to start there and then say, this church, this temple, is this temple willing to be purified? Am I willing to walk away from those things? Am I willing to hold my friends on the golf course in love accountable? Am I willing to talk to my brothers who I know are promiscuous and they maybe watch porn and say, guys, we can't do that in the church. But sure. pastors don't want to talk about porn because they know if they do this coming Sunday, five or six hundred hands are going to go up and they're afraid of it. So it's sexual immorality. We have in our culture embraced sexual immorality, Nick. The only way you break America is you have to remove its history, its foundation, not teach it. You have to change the language. What's the definition of marriage? What's gender? What's male and female? You can't say man and woman on the floor of the Congress anymore, right? You move a nation that way, and you have to sexually immoralize a country. You've got to make sex with children normal now we're teaching comprehensive yep. sex ed in the classroom kindergarten age 10 we have gender uh, you know transgender story hour five-year-olds seven-year-olds so this fight is in the home there's no way any parent can say not my house we have to take ownership the church the individual the temple of god the pastor the youth pastor do you know, Nick, that over 60%, 55% divorce in the church, 60% of church-going youth today watch porn? Do you know that 65% of American female college students have shared a nude picture of themselves via text message? This is where it happens. When that child sends a nude picture of herself to her boyfriend, who almost always shares it with someone else, it's eternal. It's out there. It will hunt her and haunt her forever. The shame, and, and now it becomes a tool in a predator's hand to manipulate, to coerce, to bribe force fraud coercion. So it comes straight back to the individual taking responsibility. So if there's one child, because the God we serve says, I'll leave 99 for one. And I'll close with this. If there's one child in America today, one and you've, you've quoted the numbers, and, and Attorney General Ken Paxton, that's the same numbers, 79,000 in Texas. If there's one child in America today that's being sexually exploited, the church holistically should be up in arms and say, let's go solve the problem. Mm. If, it, if we follow in the footsteps of our leader, Jesus Christ, I'll leave 99 for one. I'll go to the gates of hell to save my children. Okay? This is everybody's problem, Nick. Particularly church, because the world doesn't have the answer to this. God says, Yaku Boyens, you're in the world, which means you will face all the trial and temptation, like my son Jesus did, but you're not of it. You have a different solution. You have a blueprint. You have a living Jesus Christ that is an example of how to solve the problem. What are you going to do about it? Mm. The world's not going to fix this. It's the church. The adoption issue, the foster care issue, every issue, the race issue. Every conversation in our country, it's on the church. It's Ezekiel 33. The watchman mm -hmm. is not on the wall and warning. The blood is on the hands of the watchman. Amen. Amen. Sheriff Weyburn, to the viewers. 
Well, what I, what I would like to say is one, and, and Yako is spot on again, as he always is, and is that the uh, in our business we have seen where I've talked to the therapists that have been involved with the predator, and I said, where'd they start at? Always, always with pornography. And the average is a thousand images a day that build up to exactly that train stop that he described. So we, we know that those issues there, and if I was here sitting encouraging the church and fellow Christians, as in I agree, this is the temple, this is a church. For these kids that need to be rescued out of foster care and that, that, that need to be adopted right now, mm -hmm. is I'd like to make it very simple to my fellow Christians. Do you have an empty bedroom? Mm. Let's start right there. Now let's work on your heart and where you're at. And everybody's not called to adopt, and I get that, but everybody's called to be in the fight. And you can do other things to be in the fight. Yeah. And I'd also say to the church this, and I, and, and I love my churches. But that three-year-old, that baby three-year-old that he that last week got rescued, that was going to be eaten by coyotes, left for dead. Can you imagine if the church had the equal outrage to that as they saw, and it was wrong, is absolutely awful when George Floyd got killed? Let's just take the two. Yes. A three-year-old, an innocent three-year-old, and George Floyd. If we had that outrage of saying what we're doing is not compassionate, is not merciful at the border on this business of human trafficking. And that is the, the that child should be on, on everybody's heart, mind, on every billboard. This is what we're allowing to happen. And, and if we had the churches show up in Washington, D.C. and fill the mall and say, Mr. Biden, not here anymore. Stop it. Mm. Well said. So I think we got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. People are inspired right now, Sheriff Wayburn. People are moved. What would be their first step right now to, to start a conversation with the church, to go to a website, some resources, something that, okay, okay, I want to be part of being one of those champions for the trafficked, for these modern day slaves. Where do I start? Well, getting your church leaders to agree that we need to take it on as a mission, I think is the very first thing that they need to do. And then they can reach out to people like us, or they can reach out to Unbound, or Valiant Heart, or other groups that are out there already fighting the fight and seeing what they have to say. And if I was there asking a pastor, I would divide this up into several areas. I've divided up into an area where I wanted a pornographic team because that is prevalent. Yeah. And, and, and let's get in that pulpit and talk about that so that we diminish the predator side of this. And then I'd also have a group that says, we set, start setting goals for the church. We're going to rescue children and adopt them into our church. And we're gonna show them Christ through through that. So we start a group in that arena. Then we start a, probably another group, which would be that legislative group, yeah. that says, what should the church be telling our legislators that we need for the tools to get policing to untie those hands? Yes. So I think it's a multi-faucet attack and that the church is per perfectly able to do that. So that's what I would tell them. And as individual parents, invade those children's space. Know what they're looking at. Know, preach about pornography in the home, how awful it is, and that they're watching. I tell my kids all the time, you get on a pornography page, you're watching slaves. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're watching slaves perform. Absolutely. And uh, they're from all over the world. And they're there. And uh, so that's some of the things that I would say. But start with a church, that elder leadership in your church, say, let's address these issues. Mm -hmm. All those websites and re references of what you just said uh, are very, and, and all the other uh, organizations we're gonna be putting up on our website for Fantastic. viewers to have a look, and we'll uh, beef that page up for our viewers. Yaku, uh, same question to you. Yeah. Our organization is sharetogethernow.org, Yaku Boyens Ministries. This is what we do. We fight this fight, but like Sheriff Weyburn said, there's so many across the country who are phenomenal. Unbound is amazing. Traffic 911 in the Dallas County area. Mm -hmm. and, and those organizations are very territorial because they have to serve a certain community. You can't ask them to serve the whole country. And so we do need to see a, a resurgence 
of people taking ownership of their own local communities and connect with those organizations. And on our website, they can see organizations across 170 plus organizations across the country so that they can localize the fight and support those who God did call into the daily fight. But Nick, I'll say this, every sector of society, all seven mountains of influence is represented in the church. The church can move this nation today. Mm, today. Amen. Everything is represented. We have all the tools, and then we have the Holy Spirit. And then we have an unfair advantage. But even without the unfair advantage, which is the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God, and the favor, and the cloud by day, and the fire by night, we have every resource imaginable inside the church, in every church, right? So there is no excuse. There's no excuse. There's a call by God to say, go forth to all the nations. Sheriff said something earlier that just, man, I, 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 I'll hug him after the show for this, okay? Um, I'm from Africa. We send American missionaries to Africa. We need to send American missionaries into our streets. Your church needs to do missions work around the block. It's time to work here. We have looked abroad and pointed and said, problem, problem, problem. We've let our guard down. When these amazing men go through training, they do a thing called situational awareness. The American teenager's situational awareness is almost zero. Meaning, they don't know the red flags. They don't know what's not normal. Is it normal for a 50-year-old man to ask me to send a picture of myself in my bikini when I'm 14, 15? Well, she's told it is normal in the classroom. So it's so easy today. So it comes back down to the church and the parent to raise the situational awareness. Because even if you just do that, Nick, you raise the risk profile of the child in the eyes of the predator. And predators are bullies. They're cowards. They look for the soft target. And it looks like the child has an immediate response on Instagram, on Facebook, on PlayStation, playing live games. If the child's response is resistance, the predator is going to back up from that child. But they don't resist because they don't know, because we've normalized promiscuity in this culture, and, and it's a problem. So, yeah. Last little string to connect for our viewers that in our Western church culture, Yaku, speak one more time from your mouth to the church in case the church has also never, and Sheriff, I'm sure you would agree, thought of the power that the church doesn't have in local authorities because we haven't placed people in local authorities. Mm -hmm. Can you actually both speak on that? Mm -hmm. Because that as well, I think, needs to be said to also move the needle on this, to be part of the champions for the brokenhearted. We go into the seven mountains of influence, but of which we lack the most, Government. to me, is the political mountain. Yeah, right. Can we define this just a little bit more? We've completely misunderstood and if you look at the Federalist Papers, we have completely misunderstood and mistaught the separation of church and state. Right. Okay. We have removed the voice of God from the legislature. And so what I'll say here is we have as conservative Christians in this country, and this is my, my opinion, we have so focused on the White House, right? We have lost the local, the local government. The, if we learned anything through COVID, Nick, we learned that the county commissioner is powerful. The sheriff, for many reasons, has influence. The police chief, the superintendent of the school district. Even when the state governor says no mandate, the superintendent in the school district, the county judge, the federal judges in your county, the, the, the mayor, never before in history has a mayor had, always had the same power, but has it been wielded the way it's being wielded today. It is on the church. If there's a school board seat available, you call the men and the women in the church to say who has a calling and you send a hundred people from your church to contest for one school board seat because that's how the enemy does it. The enemy took over grassroots and I'll, I'll close with this. Our King of Kings again, Jesus, did not build his church top down. 
He built it bottom up. It was grassroots. It was him and 12 boys walking That's right. county to county, Ca tax collector to tax collector. Zacchaeus, come out of the tree. Let's go have dinner. Hard to, it was not the throne of God down, the White House down. Our eyes are so on the White House. We've had the White House, the Senate. We lost the local fight. And that's where our children, that's where their lives are lived, in the county, Tarrant County. We need to take local back. Sheriff. He's spot on, is that we were asleep at the wheel, and all of a sudden the school boards were on the other side, and they were introducing things to our children that was extremely object, uh, that we had to object to. So we've seen, we've seen some great people arise in South Lake, Texas, where Tim O'Hara yeah. took back a group and he, they, they went back and they got their school board back. They got their city council back and they need to do that. And, and we need to do that all over the nation is we need to take that back. And I remember years and years ago, and I didn't pay any attention to it at the time myself, over 20 years ago, a president that was in office that was facing impeachment, I won't say his name, but they can figure that out, is uh, he said, I believe that we could have more impact if we were on the school boards than in the White House. So going with what he said, they agree with us. They knew where to go, and they're there, and they're changing minds of 10 and 12 and 6-year-olds and 17-year-olds because we let them there and at our universities. We need to yeah. take all okay. that back. We got to take it back. This is the apple of God's eye witnessing these broken hearted modern day slaves, children of God. I can never imagine my sister being human trafficked. I can never imagine being human trafficked, even more so my frame of mind would be speechless if you told me my own child was human trafficked and we don't know where they are. That is the heart of the father for the brokenness. And I've had the honor and privilege of interviewing 10 rehabilitated slaves who were kidnapped as young as four years old, sold by their own mother. And the first question that each slave understood to ask when they were of age was how can anybody own me or another human being? It is the most evil of evil. And with millions out there who don't even know where to even begin, where hope does not exist for them unless a champion comes along, unless we, the church, come along, unless a sheriff and his combat team or share together members or those remnant that are on the front line rescuing these modern day slaves come. Who's coming for them? Pornography, feeding the beast and the industry and helping them continue to showcase slaves for other evil. We are part of the problem. We are also the part of the solution. This has not just been an incredible discussion. The reason why we are doing this is for this to be, for you, the revelation that changes your life. Because those of us 
who are of the remnant to be the champions for the brokenhearted took a life-changing revelation only convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit that can only be executed by men and women of God who have answered the call to go. Yaku, Sheriff Weyburn, what an incredible moment, what an incredible morning we've had. I thank you on behalf of the Bride of Christ, which most body parts are paralyzed. Amen. And I thank you for the prodding that you encompass to the church that's asleep. And knowing full well that it is the war of spiritual warfare of all wars and targets of all targets whereas a slave we either kill them or we enslave them in human trafficking every child is loved by God mm -hmm. and we as the adopted family of God have brothers and sisters who are modern day slaves. Yes, that's right. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. And we thank God that he would continue to provide every need to protect you on every side and continue to bring more people with that fire to join us all for the glory of God to bring his kingdom and his will on earth. We love you, Sheriff Weyburn. Thank you so much. Jakobuians, thank you. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. What an incredible, incredible time together. If you want to learn more about Champions for the Broken Hearted campaign, come see more of the information, visit lwl.tv. I just want to, before we sign off, um, I'm going to close this off in a prayer that I'd like you to join us in for our world, for our country, for our church, for those even inflicting the slavery as the pimps, madams, and traffickers that are blinded by their own evil that can only be opened to revelation by the mercy and grace of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, through our prayers in which angels are commanded and engaged to go and fight and wage war against the principalities and powers of darkness that keep them blind. For we do not want one person to go to hell. Hell is that bad. That even the person who may kidnap my own daughter or son I am commanded by God to forgive that person and to pray for them, to pray that those wicked, evil things are bound and binded and stopped in the name of Jesus and for the sake of their own soul, that they may see their evil and wicked way and stop in Jesus' name and then be convicted in Jesus name and then have their soul be rest have find restitution and healing and saving of their own self to then come to the matchless unconditional love of Jesus Christ through his blood on the cross for all then with that consuming fire turning away from their wicked ways themselves and also empowered by the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My friend, right now, we are the hands and feet of God standing in front of the gates of hell and redirecting traffic. And I want you to know that we count it nothing but a pure joy to be a co-servant with you all 
in a unified prayer and effort. We want to help equip you as viewers. We want to help resource you as viewers. That you may have known other people or you yourself have come close to being affected by trafficking. I want you to know that we've partnered with an amazing organization and many other organizations that we will be in future partnering with. But Hope for the Heart have included resources on our website for you to access to encourage you and also resources in the human trafficking, modern day slavery, um, attack on human beings from the devil himself. These resources will encourage you, will enlighten you, and also be resources to pass on to somebody else. These websites that you're seeing, pass it on to other people. Have those conversations with your church. Finally, later this month, I'll be sitting down with Christine and Nick Kane from A21 for a conversation about trafficking around the globe. We've talked today more about the national crisis right now here in the United States of America, and I'm very excited to have my Aussie friends join us here at the studio, and you definitely don't want to miss it. We love you. We're praying for you. But before we close off, let us right now close off in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the truth. Thank you that the Word of God, the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the name of Jesus, the name above every other name, is the King of Kings and stands on that throne, sits on that throne. And the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in us. Lord, prod us of our own sin and our own walk and ways and wrong thinking that we are not part of the problem. Help us to understand that we are part of the solution, that only the kingdom of God, only we the people of God can take on and accomplish by the power of unity, of knowledge, of wisdom, of discernment, of courage and boldness and resources that once they're in combined with the matchless favor and unfair advantage of the Holy Spirit. God, you're waiting on us to stop slavery. You're waiting on us to preach the gospel to the world so that your son can come back. You're waiting on us. Forgive us for sitting on our hands, sticking our heads in the sand, making up stupid, evil, blind excuses. In the name of Jesus, convict us, Holy Spirit. Move us to be the champions for the human trafficked. The champions that start the conversation. The champions that challenge our parents of why we don't have a foster kid yet in our home because we have a spare bed. The champions in our church, the hundred to run for that one school board position. The champions that will help donate to the nonprofits that are rehabilitating these rescued human trafficked. Oh God, forgive us and help us to move the needle. And put on our armor and have feet to be ready and ears to hear you today to move on behalf of you, for you, in you, through you, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Amen.